Welcome, uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children above the age of 18. It is I, the one, the only, Roberto Negro! Yes, Roberto Negro. And this is the Roberto Negro show. And how was everybody's weekend? That's all I want to know. I want to know, how was everybody's weekend? Believe it or not, I'm going to throw this out there. Believe it or not, I had a pretty successful Family Sunday had a success. Like I, do, I don't have a lot to bitch about. Believe it or not, I don't have a lot to bitch about. Family Sunday pretty much went off without a hitch. I know. I know. Fucking. I, I, listen, I almost felt like, ugh, we need to have some drama. We need to, (laughs) we need to have some drama right now. Because right, there's nothing to talk about. People are expecting craziness. James said, Major listened to the podcast and decided to stop being wild. I, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe he's sitting up in his uh, in his bedroom with fucking earbuds in, listening to the Roberto Negro show. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, it it, it was a uh, it, it was a, a a peaceful. Well, so so here's how I I had to work it though. Now here's the funny thing. Saturday morning, it wasn't peaceful. Saturday morning was was pretty bad. Or Sunday morning was pretty bad. Like, really bad. There was pandemonium going on with the kids. And Major gets into this thing where he fucking screams at uh, Martini. And then fucking Martini... Gives in to all of his fucking bullshit whims. So then he just keeps fucking going harder and harder. To the point where it makes her get just completely mad. Then I have to fucking step in. And be the heel. That's what I, I, that's what I tell Martina. I go, I gotta be the heel. I'm the one that gets no love. Because I'm the one that's gotta be the heel. I'm the one that has to grab him by his fucking arm and, you know, put him in timeout. Or I'm the one that has to grab him by his fucking shirt collar and pull him off the the, the counter where the goddamn uh, TV is. I'm the heel. I'm always the fucking heel. So Sunday... It was just bedlam, or I, you know, all fucking morning. So we get ready for family day, and believe it or not, my mom is the one that threw out the uh, idea. She goes, "You need to take those kids to like a like a like a trampoline or park or one of them things," and I was like. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Then I see Martini in the background with this fucking pouty puss on her face. So I don't say nothing to the kids. So I get the kids ready, you know, and fucking tracking them down. So now it's like 1 o'clock. So we get in the car, and I go, what's, you know, what's the... What's what? Why do I feel pushback? She's like, well, you know, they seem to be okay. And I go, okay. 
I go, but here's the issue we're going to run into. I go, we're going to do what we got to do. I go, we're going to get done in like an hour. I go, then it's going to be around 2 o'clock, 2.30. I go, and I'm not going to fucking go back to the house so that we could go through what we went through all morning. I go, I'm not going to fucking do it. I go, I'm not going to do I'm not going to come back to the house. And now I got to listen to Major and you arguing and fighting. And then you throwing your goddamn hands up in the air, walking out of the back room, exhausted mentally. Because all Major does is yells at you. I go, I'm not going to fucking do it. I go, so what's going to happen is we're going to get done with our fucking errands. It's going to be 2.30, maybe 3 o'clock, and then what? You'll tell me it's too early to have family dinner. So what do we do for fucking two hours? <sighs> okay, you're right. You're right. I just... You know, I, I go, don't worry, don't worry about the fucking groceries. It's it's cold. I go, the food's not going to spoil in a span of a, an hour. You're so worried about it, the food. Always spoil. Oh, we got groceries in the car. We got fucking groceries. Well, what do you think? The fucking eggs are going to go bad? Oh, it's 41 goddamn degrees outside. It's dark and it's raining. It's shit. It's garbage. Okay. So we go to fucking Walmart and they're they're already at Walmart. There's aspects of cuntiness at Walmart, but by and large, so I go to the Walmart that's where the trampoline park sky zone is, whatever the fuck this thing is. So I go in that area. So we go to fucking Walmart, we do the fucking Walmart, and just like I thought. I should say thought, just like I knew. It's 2.45, you know. And I go, where's the the sky zone? So she kicks it up. She goes, look, it says permanently closed. (sighs) And I'm looking at it, and I go, you know what? I I go, that's the other one where they had, like, gang fights and shit at. So I look it up. And I go, no, look, this is, it's over in Southtown. I go, no, 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 no. I go, we're going, we're going by there. Okay. So we go drive down to Southtown. I pull up in this huge strip mall and there it is. So I pull in. I go, all right, Major. I go, let's talk real here. And he goes, okay. I go, you know what's inside that building right there? He goes, what? I go, that's a trampoline park. And he goes, what? I go, that's a trampoline park. I go, here's what I'm going to throw at you. I go, I'm going to bring you into that trampoline park. And I go, and you're going to love it. What? The trampoline? We're going to go in? I said, what? I go, I got some preconditions. So now I'm like negotiating with, with with fucking North Korea. Like there's pre there's preconditions I'm putting in place. I'm not I'm not having a meeting without preconditions. I'm fucking straight up having preconditions, okay? Majors North Korea, I'm the fucking United States. We got some preconditions. I said, here's how this is gonna go. I go, you've been pretty good today. I go, I need you to be good all week. I go, you can't yell at mom anymore. I go, you can't drop kick your brother anymore. I go, you can't do the things that you've been doing. Okay. I go, hold on. I go, if you agree to that, And, and, when I tell you we have to leave this place, we go. I don't want to hear you yelling. I don't want to hear you crying. I don't want to hear you screaming. 
I go, we're going to go in there for an hour. We're going to look at the clock on the phone. When that clock expires after an hour, then it's time to go. If you do all of those things, then next week we'll do this again. I go, do you promise me? And he goes, I promise. I go, you're not lying? Because no one likes liars. He goes, I'm not lying. I go, okay. I go, let's go to the trampoline park. And he's like, trampoline park. And I swear to Jesus Christ, bro. I swear to Jesus Christ. It was like when we walked it. First off, when we go up to the door, instantly I'm like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea. Because I see what amounts to a warehouse. Like, basically imagine Costco. Completely empty and nothing but fucking trampolines and rock walls and about 300 fucking kids screaming and running and yelling and carrying on like complete fucking retards everywhere. But it's it's trampoline floors. So everybody's bouncing and screaming and acting like fucking retards. I was like, oh no. Oh fuck. And it was like, it was like Major saw the Holy Grail. I mean, he literally, literally dropped to his knees and was like, oh my God. I mean, it it literally was that of, it was like a, a religious experience for him. Because he'd never fucking seen that shit before. He'd only seen it in YouTube videos. He knew of trampoline parks, but he'd never been to one. And here he is, man. He's like, huh, huh. It's 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 kind of like, it's kind of like us as adults. Or I should take that back. Well, some adults. It's us. Feeling a tit for the first time. I think I was like 12 when I had a fucking handful of bear tit for the first time. It was it it was like a fucking religious experience. I can't even I can't even explain how amazing it was. Okay? Can't even explain how amazing it was. The only thing the only thing that compares to that amazing experience is the first time that my penis was inside a girl's mouth. That's the only other fucking amazing experience. Most amazing experience. Bear tit and fellatio. That's the only thing I can compare it to. That's all. Okay? That's all. That's it. Now, I don't like to use these types of of examples. And my child... In the same type of fucking sentence structure. But. But. The joy. The pure fucking joy. Of his face. When we walked in. To the fucking trampoline park. And we go to the kiosk. And and it's like he's like convulsing. He's like shaking. Because we have to go and sign in. And do a waiver. To say, hey, if he fucking, you know, breaks his fucking head, we can't sue the place. And he's just like, "Uh, uh, 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 uh." and then we have to pay. And I'm like, how much? And the girl's like, and it's so fucking loud in there, dude. It's like a concert. It's like being in a rock concert. It's like going to see whoever. It's like going to see the Crippler, okay? Cripplers. Except, replace the Cripplers with kids screaming and jumping and acting like fucking retards. That's the sound bouncing off these walls. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. 
So I'm like, how long? The girl's like, well, a half hour. I, I go, how long? An hour. 1995. I said, okay. She goes, how many jumpers? I said, two jumpers. I said, but let me ask you this. Obviously, I want to make sure that the kids, you know, are right. This one's three and a half, you know. I go, should we get another um, jumper pass for one of us to kind of monitor the kids? I'm not saying we're shadowing them. And you could see Catherine just looking at me like, oh, fuck, dude. This 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 19-year-old girl really doesn't give a fuck. And you're trying to break down this entire, like, you're not a helicopter parent. Or you're not, you know, you're not up on their asses. You know, and I just give her that look back like, stop. Will you please, mother of the year, relax over here. So I go, I just want to make sure. She goes, as long as you guys don't jump. I go, oh, okay. I go, so we could go in there with them as long as we don't jump. She goes, yes. I go, but the minute we jump, got to pay the $19. She goes, yes. I said, okay. Okay, and I looked at Catherine, I go, no jumping, no jumping. And again, she gives me that look like, why are you fucking with everybody at the trampoline park? So I pay the money, and they give us these cute little socks. So I put the socks on the kids, and these two fuckers literally take off faster than I can follow them with my eye. It was like skeet shooting. I, I couldn't even track them. That's how fast they took off. One went in one direction, the other went in the other direction. I'm trying to look at them. Martini's watching. I'm like, you follow Major, I'll follow Brock. They're jumping, they're fucking... Brock finds him his way to the... Dodgeball area. And there's like fucking eight year old, nine year old, ten year old kids and they're playing dodgeball. And the guy's, you know, mediating, whatever, like some high school kid, you know, b- blowing the whistle, no headshot, this, that. And there's fucking Brock, three years old. He's oblivious. He's oblivious to what's going on except he sees balls. He likes balls, not balls, but like. Fucking balls, all right? Stop with your fucking minds. He's simple. He's simple Brock, and he likes balls. Red balls, blue balls, black balls. Balls flying all... He's, well, I think he takes after his fucking mom. <laughs> fucking balls everywhere. You know? He's a fucking ball. But he's oblivious to it. He's not trying to catch the balls with his face. All right? He's not trying to catch balls across his fucking... In, on his nose. You know? He's not trying to catch the balls with his fucking mouth. No, he's not doing that. He's oblivious to balls. So that made me fucking happy. He wasn't like, oh, balls. Let me stick my fucking chin out. Hit me in my fucking mouth. Bah! So I knew we were all right there. But they're playing dodgeball and he's just walking through. Balls are flying and they're whizzing by his fucking head, grazing off the back of his head. He's grabbing a ball and I'm like, oh, okay, well, now what? You know, now, now what the fuck am I going to do? So now, of course, Martini comes around. She's like, he's in the dodge. I go, he's a fucking, what do you, what do you want? I go, they can't hit him in the head. She's like, but he's so small. Like, he's fine. Look at him. He's fine. Where the, where the big kids are grabbing the fucking balls. That he's running with the big kid. One kid fucking hit him. Like, knocked him with his leg. And then, as Brock's falling, the kid, oh, I'm, you know, helped him up, back up. So I go, go in there and fucking grab him. We'll put him over by the rock wall. So Catherine goes in the fucking dodgeball pit. Of course, her head's like on a fucking swivel. The balls are coming everywhere. And she's like fucking salivating as the balls are flying. 
I'm like, just get the fucking kid. Don't worry about trying to catch balls. Jesus. He fucking comes out with the fucking kid. I go, I'm going to go bring him into the ball pit. She's like, I think I'm going to stay over here. I go, oh, you stay by all the balls flying around. <laughs> I said, okay, all right. But come 5 o'clock, swear to Jesus. I mean, and they're sweating. They're fucking, I mean, it's insanity. They're, they're fine. I go, Major. It was actually 4.45. I go, Major, look. And he goes, no. I go, you got 15 minutes. He goes, okay. I go, so get get it in. Let's go. Let's go. And then at 5 o'clock. I go, Mage, it's time to go. He goes, okay. He goes, can we go to Uno's now? I go, yes, we can. So now we get in the car. We we pack them up, rock and roll. We get in the car. We get near Uno's. I said, now, Major, so we don't have a repeat of last time. I go, so far, so good. I go, you're going back to the trampoline park next week. Okay, I go, but here's what's going to happen next. We're going into Uno's. And if you act like you did last week when you fell on your face from Restaurant Karma, there's no trampoline park. There's nothing. I go, you get nothing. And I'm not just talking about for a week or two. You get nothing forever. Okay. I go, now, when we get in there, I got to go pee, and I want to wash my hands. When we sit down and we order our beverage, I'm going to get up. If you want to go pee and wash your hands, you come with me then. We get into the fucking restaurant. We sit down. We order our fine beverages. I go, Major, are you ready to go pee and wash our hands? He goes, yes, I am. We get up, we go to the bathroom, wash our hands, we take a pee. I always teach my kids to wash their hands before they touch their dicks. We go back out to the fucking table. We have our delicious meal. There's no disturbances. There's no craziness. We leave. We get in the car. We go home. Ladies and gentlemen, I would say it was the most successful family Sunday. Maybe ever. Maybe ever. The kids were tired. I got them ready for bed. I took both of them to bed. Because that's what I do. Just call me super fucking dad. Okay? A big SD on my fucking chest. At one point, Schlack called me up. I was like, I put my kids down. And it took a longer time, and then Schlack goes, you're still putting them down, there must be wild. There's Schlack questioning how long it takes for my wonderful children to fucking go to bed. I finally get them down, and then I realize I have to go to Extreme Gifts to close up, cash out. See if it made any fucking money. Talk to Schlack. Went home. Went to bed. There you go. That was a successful Sunday. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, Friday night, I laid pipe. I did. I I fucking laid pipe. I, I fucking did. I took this fucking, this m- fucking meat out. 
Okay? I gave a little fucking... I gave uh, a little stumming to uh, Martini. My ejaculate was so fucking thick. It was thick. Filthy. It's like fucking thick. Like not even Elmer's glue. Just thick. And that was Friday. I know some of you were 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 curious. <coughs> Went hard in the paint. Yep. That's what I did. So there you go. It was, and I, you know what's funny? Saturday, I don't fucking remember what we did Saturday. That's how That's how crazy Saturday was. In the sense of, I know we worked. And I know we had to... Do something with the kids, and I just don't remember what. Oh, Jesus Christ, do I even dare? Oh, I remember now. If Martini's listening, you know what? She's probably up there having a little tantrum going. I can't believe you forgot. I can't believe you forgot. And I feel like this is a different bit. I feel like this should be a different bit. But I know we also got to talk to to Schlack on the next bit. He's got big breaking news. It's not as big as Metallica dropping their new single today and talking about their new world tour. It's not as big as that, but it's it's it for Schlack it's big. For Schlack it's big. And I think he was going to give us his uh, his two cents on uh, the Teddy Hart documentary. Even though I kind of feel like we're past the Teddy Hart documentary. But nonetheless, I'm going to save where I was Saturday for tomorrow. Because it's a good bit. Because it will translate into being a good bit. Trust me. It's going to be a good, good bit. But I was in Buffalo. I was in Buffalo. I'm gonna just get a. T- I'll give you a little, a little tip. I was in Buffalo, looking at a mansion that people house events in. And it would be number two. There you go. Those are all the hints. It would be number two. We'll talk about it. Um, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a good bit. All right. Just a tip. I gave you guys the fucking tip. I can't just put the tip in if you're talking about that type of tip. You know why? Buy a big fucking tip. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's call Schlack. All right. Yeah. Are you eating? Hold on. <laughs> what do you? I, no, I I wanted to eat, but I'm waiting for the fucking phone call. Uh, you're supposed to go on at nine. This like, I, the one o'clock in the morning thing was more my speed. This nine o'clock thing, because I was at the tattoo shop, and then I usually get done at nine. So I came over here, and I came back to my apartment. I usually, you know, fucking eat around this time when I'm done working. 
Because then I go to the gym after. So, you know, you got me all loused up, dude. I'm starving waiting for your call. It's 10 o'clock. The show is supposed to start at 9, dude. Bro, no, I was, I... Wait, before, before we even get to this, all right. you neglected to answer my question on the uh, thread there when you were doing the bid previously. Um, on Friday, when you were laying the pipe, where did you finish? <laughs> where... <coughs> I tried to. I Don't be tried, shy. huh? Don't be shy. No, no, no. I tried to. I tried to make her consume all of it, but it okay. was it was so thick and so a lot she couldn't. It, it like she gagged on it. She was like, oh, nice, nice. And then nice. she pulled some of it out of her mouth, and I was so pissed off. And, and I and I brought it up all night. Like I kept going, like, "Wow!" Like that. She's like, "Are you really upset by that?" She goes, "All right, next time." <laughs> she goes, "Next time, I'll 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 take it all." She goes, "Jesus!" She goes, "But it was just so thick and so just there." I go, "I know." I I go, "I know it was." Con, I've been saving that up for a fucking week. I what know. Did you think I wanted you to do with it. Exactly. <laughs> It's like take yeah, take that shit. Take it. It was it was so congealed she had to chew on it. <laughs> it was it was like it was like uh it was like warm jello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was like chunky warm jello. <laughs> uh, right, speaking of Friday night, next Friday, you said the cripplers. It's the crippler. Uh well, who's the one? Who's okay? Crippler? Is it one Crippler? Who's the fucking one Crippler? I don't know. The whole band. Every song is about like strong arm robbery and stealing people's shoes and like the alleyways and shit. And, you know, just <laughs> wait a minute. You, you seriously? You have a song? You have a song about stealing someone's shoes in an alley? Yeah, it, dude. It's like I just write what I did when I was younger, and it just. The story's already written. I just gotta put it on paper. Well, uh, give me an idea. Like, give me, give me an idea. Give, give me, like, like, how does it go? I went in the alley and I took your fucking shoes and I took no. them off. I, the lyrics. I fucking write the lyrics and there's songs called like, uh, "Let's See What's Inside Those Pockets" is the name of one song, and uh, <laughs> it's about like I want your fucking credit cards and cash and I'll even take the goddamn lint in your pockets and I want your shoes or I'm going to buck 50 your fucking face in the alleyway, you know, shit like that. <laughs> I want to so say, it's like, it's like, then you come over and then I take your fucking shoes. I take your fucking, like that? Well, I mean, it's not quite like that, but you know, it's a little more aggressive and abrasive. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you're, you're in the same stratosphere. Well, give me like one line. I, I don't fucking, I don't do the vocals. I play guitar. I just, I don't remember all the lyrics. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, nose bit off, teeth bashed in, slowly beaten to death, bludgeoning. I don't know. That's like, that's in a whole nother song. Going, I don't want to hurt you. I just want to kill you. <laughs> um, I'm, talks I'm, about like, I'm so offended by this. That's the whole point. Well, yeah, it's every band I've ever been in is like hyper offensive, except for that Eat the Turnbuckle band. That was a, I was actually uh, trying to. I wouldn't say I was trying to make money, but I was not trying to be an asshole with that. But I just was a total asshole because everyone in the band was bleeding and breaking things and stuff like that. So I can't not be an asshole when I play music. It just. That's what I think it's for. I don't think it's for anything else but making a racket and destroying things. Fucking Sneakers is on there, man. Sneakers just chimed in. She said, me too. Why the shoes? Why you fucking take the shoes? You should do a song about somebody who steals sneakers to give to Kim. <laughs> Another band. We'll start that. Sneaker King. Yeah. Be like, I went. I got some fucking sneakers. I gave them to the merch girl, and she fucking really loved them. Like, yeah. You sound you, you sound like fucking Cheech and Chong, that earache my eye. Where it's like, dental, 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 dental. 
<laughs> well, I was thinking, I was thinking more mentors. Well, that's the greatest band of all time. Where it's like, come, little girl, it's getting near the hour. Come with me and take a golden shower. Yeah, well, El Duce is fucking god, dude. That the mentors. And G.V. Allen are the reason why I am the way I am as an adult. Because I was told to listen to those bands at a really young age, and it completely warped my fucking sense of humor. And now you have the disgrace before you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I... See, I'm older than... <coughs> old, I'm 49. Um, I'm 26. Oh yeah, of course. Um, I used to. Oh God, I'm just trying to think of of. So, I used to listen. We used to have this like weird metal, like college metal station that was around. Um, you know when I when I was like fucking twelve years old, and. They wouldn't play the mentors, but they would talk about it. And once in a while, they would play a mentor song and they would bleep like they themselves would bleep it. So I remember going, what the fuck is this? So I went to the house of guitars and I got the the that that album uh, on a cassette tape. uh, And it's the it's I, I, I call it the commercial one that's got. Golden Shower, and it's got the Sandwich of Love. That's the and, best song. And it's called, and I think the record was You Axed for It. Yeah, You Axed for It. And then there's Up the Dose. Um, there's a, a lot of them, but anyway, uh, fucking, yeah, that, the mentors are like, uh, the radio station was like the Neckbeards with XPW. You know, they'll talk about it and talk about it and talk about it, and every once in a while they'll, they'll watch it. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, and, uh, and you know, it's funny, the guy, the guy who's in, one of the guys that were in the band, Kill Allen Wrench. No, he wasn't in the band, Kill Allen, Allen Wrench was a dude that started a band called Kill Allen Wrench with Heathen Scum, the guy that plays bass in The Mentors. Got it. He. Allen Wrench, Allen Wrench is supposedly... The dude that killed El Duce and made him on the railroad tracks because uh, put him on the fucking railroad tracks when he was drunk. Well, that dude, that dude used to fucking hang out at the at Extreme Associates because he was friends with one of the directors that we had named um, Kid Vegas. So we had a kid named Kid Vegas there that worked for us, and he somehow was friends with Kill Allen Wrench, and Kill Allen Wrench would come and hang out at the fucking, at the Extreme Associates office. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's Dude, pretty fun. Bro, I'm we used tell, It's like such a small fucking world because I know the mentors, and I did tours with the mentors, and it's great. Bro, we used to have, dude, we used to have some fucking wild characters that would hang out at the office that just everybody wanted to kind of be part of this you know this wacky weird fucking you know extreme associate fucking wrestling porn type of weird thing like griffin um um the the uh griffin o'neill used to hang out and so it was Ryan O'Neill's kid and I think the kid might be dead now. So Fair Fawcett and uh uh, uh Ryan O'Neill's kid, Griffin O'Neill, who uh w- you know was in and out of fucking jail and stuff. So he would hang out with one of these guys that we called Coffee Ron. And okay. And Coffee Ron worked for me, and I made him a director. And once in a while, fucking, you know, Coffee Ron would have these degenerates hanging out at the office. So one day, we're in my office, and I had, at the time, my office was made to look like a giant football field with AstroTurf and shit like that. 
So me, oh yeah, it was crazy, dude. So and the walls were painted red and was fucking autographed football cards and shit all over the place. Fucking just complete insanity. So we're sitting there. So it's me. Fuck, I don't know. Maybe Slava was there. Fucking someone else. And we're going over movies. And Coffee Ron comes by. And he's like, hey, man, I was going to get some stuff out of the warehouse. And blah, blah, blah. So he walks by. And he's like, oh, man, this is my friend Griff. And he, he's like, hey, what's going on? And he walks by. And someone goes, is that fucking Griffin O'Neill? And I go, I think that fucking was. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is Griffin O'Neill fucking doing in the fucking warehouse? And sure <laughs> shit, it was Griffin O'Neill. Yeah. That, uh, that guy, Alan Wrench, has a, an album called My Bitch is a Junkie. <laughs> <laughs> I even think we've got, like, video of him in the office, like, hanging out in the office. He was a weird dude. Yeah, he is weird. I, I met him. Before. Big he guy too, and he's big. Like he's a big, bulky guy. He was a uh, he was a cage fighter before like UFC existed. Like like way before, you know what I mean? Like he was doing that shit before that was really even a thing. Yeah, big, big, bulky guy. Weird, 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 weird. Um, yeah. All right. So so we've we've covered uh 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 fucking mentors we've covered come we've covered uh our our merch girl sneakers let's let's talk about crippler you got big news let's talk about the crippler i mean i don't know if it's fucking big news but the crippler is playing this friday in north jersey uh i don't i forget what fucking city it is but it's near newark but um uh they're playing with the fucking dysentery and the uh, mortician and uh, embludgeonment, I think. But anyway, uh, XPW is now going to sponsor the fucking show. It's my boy Gutter Christ's birthday party show. XPW is going to sponsor the show. Come down and I'll do some kind of fucking raffle or something and give away some XPW shirts and some free tickets to the show in January in Newark. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it there. And do you think maybe, maybe, Schlack, maybe, maybe you could get us the exact information tomorrow so we could kind of like hype it up, like the address and what's the club and stuff like that? Sure, I'll tell you right now. I just got to look at my fucking phone. Um, The address is Jimmy's Lounge. 188 Midland Avenue in Kearney, New Jersey, 07032. Doors are at 7. Jimmy's Five. Jimmy's Lounge. Eric uh, Hernandez threw that out there. Kearney, New Jersey. This motherfucker, he knows all of it. He knows everything, this fucking guy. <laughs> he, he knows more about it than I do, and I'm playing the fucking show. Kearney, New Jersey at Jimmy's Lounge. Go see Schlack. With the Crippler, and it's a, there. and it's an XPW sponsored event. I'll wear the deathmatch belt and fucking play naked, and my dick will hang out and shit. Are you sure you're gonna wear the deathmatch belt? Because I've heard the I'll wear the deathmatch belt, and then you don't wear no, the deathmatch belt. Yeah, it's close to home. I don't gotta lug the fucking thing uh, over state lines. All right, so we we we're, we can be guaranteed. The death match belt will be worn. Yeah, for sure. I'll have a bunch of fucking metal broads wearing the fucking thing, showing their tits, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely be nice if we could get some footage we could put on TV. Yeah, for sure. I'll do it. Okay, that's what you say again. You you do no, a I'm... lot of, uh, uh, yeah, 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 but then it doesn't happen. Okay, well, my bad. I get fucking shit hammered and... You know, the last thing I'm thinking about is, is filming anything. But I'll make a fucking point of it. I'm going to write it down on one of these bills I'm not going to pay this month <laughs> on my fucking table right now. <laughs> what are these bills I'm not... What are these bills I'm not going to pay? What the fuck kind of bills could you have, bro? You have rent for a, a, a fucking an apartment to just a room. And you got right. no cable. You got no internet. You what, 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 what bills do you got? 
I had a Pico. I got an electric bill. I do. I usually pay like every other month. Okay, you got an electric bill. What else? Electric and phone, and that's it. That's it. And my phone. And my car insurance, though. Boy, yo, you know what I've been paying? I feel like it's a fucking bill. The last, like every other day for the past like fucking two weeks, I've been getting a fucking parking ticket. I went to go to the post office today to mail shit, and I come out and there's a fucking ticket on my car. I'm like, what the? On my truck? I'm like, what the fuck? I just happened to leave the truck on the one side of the street. I look at it. And it goes street cleaning every Monday between 1 p.m. and 1:30. Don't leave your, your vehicle there. I was in the fucking post office. Of all the times, the entire week, one half hour for street cleaning, and my truck was in the fucking thing. $31. Dude. But I'm, I've been getting tickets like every fucking other day, so I feel like that's a bill right now, too. Well, you know what? Here, Hey, listen. Listen. Before we get a little Teddy Hart. Before we get a little Teddy Hart. Tell, did, you, did you talk? Did you call your mom for Thanksgiving? Yes, yes. I was like, happy Thanksgiving. She's like, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. What about your sister? No. Text. I texted. You texted? Okay. Did Did you have a, a moment where you felt a little cat's in the cradle and call your dad? No, that won't happen. So you're not going to call your dad? No. Maybe I'll, I'll just prolong it. And then if I get like word or notion that he's on his deathbed... Maybe that's when I'll I'll go in the hospital like, yo, dude, I'm not going to let you die without me saying fuck you. Buddy. Oh, God, that's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to make it my mission to, to, to reunite you and your dad. To rekindle our relationship. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So what did you do for Thanksgiving? Nothing. I fucking told you I wasn't doing anything. I just sat in the fucking my apartment <laughs> and I did nothingness. I what do you mean fucking... nothing? You just sat there all by yourself. Yeah. Well, I don't give a fuck, dude. That's sad. Uh, why? Why is it sad? Who cares? Because you're all by yourself that. sitting there thinking of weird shit. Like I want to rob people of their fucking shoes. Yeah. Well, inspiration's got to come from somewhere. Just sitting there. <laughs> Uh, I have, as I said, I don't, I don't, I'm not a holidays person. I don't give a fuck. Same thing as any, every day is a holiday for me. Every day is the weekend for me. I don't, you know, those designated days as bullshit, dude. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe in holidays. I don't believe in my birthday. None of it, dude. So you just sat there alone. Did you have turkey at least? No, I, I might have had. Brown chicken. Is that good though? Is, is that a proper substitute for Thanksgiving? It's a bird. Brown? Ch- why brown chicken? Ground, because I got brown meat in my fucking freezer. Dude. Oh, ground. Yeah, what do you mean? What did you think I said? Brown chicken? Yeah, I thought you meant brown chicken. I was like, what the fuck? What are you getting reduced meat now? <laughs> Great D from Walmart. <laughs> oh, all right. All right, so give us your... Okay, so that's what you did for... Okay, give us your thoughts on Teddy Hart. Uh, Teddy Hart, well, you know, I have a unique perspective from it because I used to date Maria, and when there was, like, they had a lot of friction when they were dating, you know what I mean? So she was... I'm still friends with her. I still talk to her periodically every once in a blue moon now. Um. So, uh... You know, I, I got it from a different perspective. I, I kind of saw that whole story from Maria's perspective. She would tell me things. And all, all the pieces of the puzzle weren't together until I watched the documentary. Because I didn't give a fuck about Teddy Hart or any bullshit missing broads. I don't care about any of that shit. But I would get it from that angle. So when I saw the documentary, I'm like, oh, that all makes fucking total sense now. Because I'm, I saw it from one of the girls' perspectives, more or less. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, like one time Maria was all fucked up, you know, she called me from Texas. She, uh, you know, she's like, I don't know where I'm at, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it sounds like, you know, you, uh, are all fucked up on acid, like you got dosed with acid or something. And, uh, then I'd watch the documentary, I put it together and, 
you know, when um, she didn't know where she was at and shit, you know, and during the documentary, they, the other girls said they would get dosed and drugged and then they would get choked out. Well, when Maria had that scuffle with Teddy and the guy came to the fucking house with the gun that she knew to get him out of fucking trouble or whatever, when she lived in Virginia or wherever the fuck it was at the time, Baltimore, um, Teddy tried to put her in a chokehold, but Maria was too fucking big. He, she's not a small girl. She fought him off. She, he couldn't choke her the fuck out. So now I'm putting it all together, and I saw the shit, you know, after seeing the show, it's it's like that dude had the, the same exact thing reoccurring over and over and over to different girls. Just Maria managed to escape the shit because she's not a fucking, you know, small girl. Yeah, she's so big. She, she kind of dodged the bullet, more or less. You know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, I don't, I don't know if Teddy personally fucking killed the broad or had anything to do with the girl getting killed but it seems like because after seeing this shit and hearing it firsthand from like Maria's perspective that he got that girl in a shitty situation and he probably feels bad about it because he, he put her in a shitty situation and that's how she got whacked the fuck out or got missing so that's why he's all timid and, and his, his fucking temper flares up when he gets asked questions about it because he probably feels guilty about that. So he probably knows what the fuck happened. He just doesn't want to divulge the information. But I don't think he killed anybody. Did Did you know... Do you know that weirdo... The pedophile guy? What's his name? Chance or whatever it is? No, that dude runs that... that, that the, the, the dojo in uh, Florida. I, don't, I heard about that guy, though. He's a gay dude or whatever. Have you have you ever done those uh, those like those male wrestling videos? The fuck out of here, male wrestling videos. <laughs> <You're> okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll die homeless on the street, starving to death. I'll eat fucking out of dumpsters, and it won't be the first time I did that before. <laughs> you know, well, so, well, remember, remember what, uh, remember what the one my one listener said. We probably make a lot of money. With uh, with you and Willie, and Willie just puts his big black cock right in your fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that that's a whole other market. That's a whole other market. That's a fucking be you guys be and, and and imagine imagine the viewer at home and they're watching this wrestling match and they're like, <laughs> and they're like, oh okay, okay wow, and all of a sudden Willie comes right up to you and he's like, hey slack, foo. I want to put my big black cock right on your face. <laughs> Go for it, dude. Let's do it, man. Yes. <laughs> Let's see it. It's not as big as I thought it was. That must be a myth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you never knew that guy. No, no, no. I, the, one, the one guy you were talking about. It's pretty funny with the Jaguar. Bill, the it's Bill. Him. It's fucking well, Bill. I love that well, guy. Yeah, dude. Well, it's funny. Like I said, he, Teddy did the same thing over and over. Teddy had a fucking new, like, I don't know, remember what it was, Cadillac, brand new Cadillac. And he didn't have a job when he was with Maria. It was in those YouTube videos. Maria and him were traveling around the country. That's why she was in Dallas, Texas, and she called me all fucked up not knowing where she was and how she got that way. He would drive her around and more or less keep her hostage and not take her home and, and you know, probably choke her out or dose her with the shit. And he, 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 there's, no one has any idea how he got that fucking car. So he probably got another sap like the dude with the Jaguar and did the same thing with him. The guy bought the fucking thing. He gave the same song and a dance because I'm Teddy Hart from the fucking Hart family fucking dungeon, you know, and some fucking jerk off idiots like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll fund your shit. You know, he probably did the same thing over and over and over and over and over. That's fucking a good... See, man, I've, you know, I, I, I've never been able to... And... and not that I don't like free shit, but I've never been able to exploit that part of the business. Like I, and when I say I, I just, I'm sure that if I put myself in, out there in those positions, I could just like, just like uh, our buddy fucking Danny and a bunch of those other guys. 
when they get fans to go and pay for people's plane tickets. So it's like a fan that goes, hey man, I'd really love to see Big Fucking Joe against you. And Danny goes, okay, we'll buy the plane ticket. And then a fan goes and buys the plane. It's like I, I've never been able to bring myself into that world where you're getting fans to pay for plane tickets or you're getting fans to pay for fucking hotel. Ro- I just, I mean, I just, right. I, I, I would just assume like close shop than fucking than do that. Like, right. I, I like, I like to sleep at night. Number one, and uh. Number two, you know, I know it doesn't appear it, but I do have some dignity. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know it doesn't look like that at all, but I do have dignity and some kind of self-pride. You know what I mean? So uh, why would I cheapen all my shit with that? You know, I, I don't know. I don't understand some people, bro. You know, there's a lot of mud you can fucking sling at me. There's a fucking lot of mud you can sling at you. But, you know. Just, that just that's just because we have really warped, shitty fucking sense of humors and are willing to cross the line as long as it's kosher with everything. You know what I mean? Uh, but that seems to be more, you know, more of a terrible thing than 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 actually doing some fucked up things. I don't really understand it, but you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's it's bizarre, but right. At least you have the fucking. You know, as little moral code that you do have, Rob, and as little moral code as I have, there's some core standards in there, you know, that, but I, I don't know. This shit gets overlooked. Don't ask me why. I never understood it myself. All right. So um, with that being said, let's uh, let, let's remind the fans once again. Where they could check out Schlack on Friday. Jimmy's Lounge in Kearney, New Jersey. <laughs> December 2nd. Uh, the Crippler Dysentery Mortician's Headlining. Uh, in Bludgeon and some fucking opening band. Lunar Blood, I think. I don't know. But uh starts at 7, I think. Or doors at 7. Sure, shit will run till like one a.m. because it's my boy Gutter and it's his birthday and he's gonna get absolutely fucking shit happening. It's gonna be a total shit show. I know a bunch of people flying in, like actual like wrestling fans, dudes that went to the last XPW, uh, a bunch of people from Philly. And it's gonna be good. Trust me. All right. So Jimmy's Lounge Friday night. Go see Crippler featuring the Crippler. The Crippler. Featuring the one, the only, king of the deathmatch champion, Schlack. Who will be there wearing the belt, giving away XPW t-shirts, and some tickets. For like, somebody who does, you gotta do something where it's like, whoever does something stupid. Or if there's a girl there, whoever like, I don't know, fucking opens their assholes up or something like that. You did. You, you took the fucking thoughts right out of my head, dude. <laughs> Fuck it. So you could even have the guys open their asshole. <laughs> if there's no girls willing to open their asshole, come on up, guys. First, first guy to open his asshole with fucking a pair of tickets. <laughs> I remember, um, uh, I threw this thing like maybe fucking I don't know ten years ago, fifteen years ago. I, I threw it three years in a row. It was called Sleazorama. And I got like five bands, like mentors played at one time. I got a bunch of like this band called Sexperiment from fucking Boston. I got all these like sleazy metal grind bands and shit like that to play. And I got, uh, I, I know a bunch of girls that do like, uh, it was called um, Rigobortis Review. They did like real weird, risque, you know, uh, like fucking dance routines and with like the horror movies and a bunch of strippers I knew and my girl at the time, you know, she would come and we got like dominatrixes and fuck. It's just all every weird fucking sex kink thing you could think of. And we threw it at these venues. And, um, one of the years we had a small dick contest and <laughs> the winner got like, I don't know, 200 bucks or some, whatever the fuck it was. And, uh, this dude, 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 one guy comes up, another guy comes up, other guy comes up, 
And he's like, he's like, he pulls his dick out. This dude's dick is tiny, bro. And uh, he, he pulls it out in front of everyone. This dude's a pretty fairly well-known dude in the area. And uh, he, he's like, yes, I won. I'm the one, 200. And then last second, some dude runs up on stage and pulls it out, pulls his dick. And his dick was smaller, and he gets the money, and he darts out the fucking front door. Now, imagine being number two of the small dick contest. You don't get the money, and everyone saw your small pecker. Ugh, that's horrible. That's a real, that's a real shitty night. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, we'll, we'll have to come up with some things. Like, maybe we get somebody to to cover their fucking body in feces, and they could be, like, the shit people, you know? Like now we're talking my language. Right? It's like, oh, the, the, you know, a girl should be, like, the shit woman, and she's just... You know, she's doing blackface, but she with, with shit. So she's covered her body in shit, and then she's it's not blackface, it's shit face. And right. it's just, yeah, 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 I like that. It's, that could be cool. Brown face. <laughs> I fucking yeah. shit face. No, I gotta say it. Um, do you remember? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Sixty shows ago, you were you were talking to Slava, and Slava made a comment on the fucking post. He goes. I got a picture of Schlack doing theater. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, no, I wasn't doing theater. There was a fucking contest in Philly. Did we talk about this already? Bro, I can't believe that you're bringing up something from fucking, uh, uh, fucking six, five months ago. Are you fucking no. crazy? No, it, it's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. Okay, go ahead. Well, that picture was me at this contest on stage wasn't a theater fucking photograph well this contest was uh it was called what would you do for or called what would you do and it was thrown like every year by this um fucking weird tv show that came out of philly well anyway uh you had to do a routine go on stage do something and you would win the fucking payday so me and my girlfriend at the time that was a fucking heroin junkie <laughs> we went on stage and she tied me off with a fucking piece of barbed wire and shot me up with Jack Daniels on stage. It was like, what would you do for, you know, the money? And we're like, do we got, and then I stabbed her in the ass with like 50 syringes. I was like, we got this in the bag. Well, another person comes up and some dude and some girl come up and she sits in a taco fucking shell and pisses in a drink and the dude eats the shit. And drinks the fucking piss. I was like, of course, dude. That's the only thing that could trump shooting up uh, fucking whiskey is eating shit. The shit eaters always win. <laughs> so if you want tickets for XPW at the Crippler and Mortician show on February 2nd, maybe you should come in and eat a shit taco and you'll get yourself a t-shirt. Listen... Th th that was a good payoff. That was a long story for a good payoff. A shit taco to win XPW tickets and a t-shirt. So if somebody eats a shit taco, they're getting a, a XPW t-shirt. They get a pair of tickets. Like it's a, you know, like a first, first person to eat a shit taco gets a pair of tickets to the, so they, <laughs> pair of tickets. You'll get a brand new Crippler album and a Crippler t-shirt. Oh, I like that. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to put that out. I'm going to fucking be like, we'll do an advertisement for the show, and it'll be like the first person to eat a shit taco at the show wins, and then we list everything that they get. A, a grab bag. Oh yeah, it's a great. It's a. It's not even. It's it's a. It's better than a mystery box because you know what you're going to get to eat the shit right. taco. It's a box, and and you know, you know already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen to me. I'm gonna go now, so I could wrap things up because I haven't I haven't eaten yet either. All right, I'm fucking starving. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, Later. did you make any of those calls that you were supposed to make? Yes, I'll fucking hit you up when the show's done. All right, bye. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We are back, and we are live. <sighs> I'm going to have to ask Mins who Maddie Mac is. Who the fuck is Maddie Mac? 
Oh, SWF. The fuck is SWF? It's got to be one of the uh, the Jersey guys. Uh, what the fuck was I going to talk to you guys about? Oh, fuck, let me take a break. <laughs> It's my COVID kicking up. Extreme gifts. From pop culture gifts to adult fun. T-shirts, mugs, socks, fun, topical gifts for all ages. Then there's mature fun, massage lotions, naughty games, toys, and lingerie. Extreme Gifts specializes in Delta 8 CBD, cartridges, edibles, vaporizers, and vaping liquids. The selection of glass products is amazing. From Kratom, Kava, Flower, and so much more. Extreme Gifts. 1694 Penfield Road. Next to the original Steve. Steiner. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Roberto uh, Negro here. So, listen. Uh, if you go to fight, okay. If you go to fight right now. And you uh, kick in XPW, you will see that Halloween, or uh, Halloween, Merry Xmas, Merry Christmas, is um, up and live. So, uh, it just went up, uh, it actually went up yesterday, um, but we just announced it today, because they... uh, they kind of fucked up the time. Uh, I knew. I, I mean, I, I knew when I had talked to Mins about this. Um, and the uh, the the fact that the time was off, so they had it at eight p.m. Obviously, it's L.A. Obviously, uh, the time is different. So everything in the fight catalog or the the fight library rather it's live or whatever the fuck they do is east coast time so uh when you um put up your your stream it puts it and converts it into the east coast time because i don't know i never even really got a good explanation from keith or paul at least when Paul was there, of why. But, like, there wasn't a real good explanation. You know when somebody just tells you something, and you're like, well, why? You know? And they don't really give you a good reason of why. It's just kind of like, well, that's the way the system is. It's like, well, why not put, well, this is the way it, oh, okay. So, it was at 8 o'clock, Obviously, if I released it and promoted it, uh, our diehard fans would have just bought it. And the non-diehard fans uh, would have probably said, why is it 8 o'clock? When is this? So they changed it today. And it's up at the 10 p.m. East Coast time which is 7 p.m. on uh, the West Coast. So, go order the pay-per-view. Go order it. You will enjoy it. We got a bunch of cool things planned. I know I've had some people hit me about uh, other match announcements. And I understand... That people like match announcements. And I'm not discrediting match announcements. And everybody does match announcements. So I'm not going to shit on, um, you know, the concept of, oh, fuck it. We're just going to do non nap But I think those of you who've been following XPW for... Um, 
long enough know uh, that we format the show, we format the program, we format everything just a little bit different than uh, the uh, other indies where it's, hey, here's the card and here's a bunch of matches and here's some first-time matches and BB. Hey, for heaven's sakes, WWE, they'll have matches that aren't set um, until the, the go-home show. I'm not saying all their stuff isn't laid out, but, you know, they, they kind of work in the angles and build to the angles and so forth. And so, obviously, you guys know that there is a schlack, necro type of deal. Uh, obviously, Ty of Valkyrie is going to be defending her title. The question is, who will she be facing? And all of these things will be answered this week uh, and next week. So between now and Friday of next week, you will have uh, the lineup and you will know who's um, wrestling who. But at this point, um, if you're an XPW fan, you've either bought your tickets or you're going to buy your tickets. And now it's basically a race for pay-per-view buys. That person that goes, oh, okay, well, what else can I buy on Saturday night? So, we'll have some more announcements, um, you know. Have some more announcements and putting together, um, you know, the TV show, which will be released Wednesday. And then there'll be another show the following Wednesday. So, um, if you guys want a little taste before we go off the air, um, January 21st, we are not your kind. For the first time, in Jersey, XPW, the juice bar will... Debut, yes. The Juice Bar. The Juicy One. Juventud Guerrero will be bringing the Juice Bar to the XPW Arena, a.k.a. the Heart Ballroom. Now the question is, who will step into... The Juice Bar. So, the Juicy One will be back in Jersey with XPW. First time debuting the Juice Bar. So, big announcement. Big announcement. It's Rob Black's Rob Black Show. We'll see you guys. No, the one man crew. Uh, will not be there. Well, I don't think so. Who knows? Maybe you will. It's Rob Black's Rob Black Show. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, I might have another surprise for you tomorrow. So, be good, be strong. It's Rob Black's Rob Black Show. Peace out.